Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can securely access the Azure storage uh, container in C Sharp along with the SAS tokens, shared access signature token, and not only that, and I'll show you how to you know generate the URLs along with the SAS so that you can use those URLs uh, to present to the user and download the blobs which is inside the container. All right, come, let's dive in. I have logged into the Azure portal and Azure AZ204 storage demo is the container or you know the storage account that we created in the last demo. And if I go inside this uh, account, I have the containers and inside the demo protected containers, you can see these files are already there. If you try to open that URL, it will show you it doesn't have, it doesn't access. Basically it do access, but you just don't have access. Okay, so now this is good. So in order to access that, you can go to the SAD access uh, token and you can select the permissions that you want. In order for us to read, just to read permission is sufficient. And then these are the settings that you will do it from the portal. But I'm going to show you how you can do all these settings through the .NET Core uh, Web API and generate the token. You can, you can even allow a specific IP address. Now, based on what you choose here, this is the uh, the query parameter which will hold all these information now if you put that query parameter to the file and it will show you the file because now you have access to the resource now this is what we're going to see how to do it from the dotnet core web api and we have an endpoint called download blobs once you put the container name it will go through every single file inside the container and it's going to generate the sas token for us the token that you saw in the portal right Along with that, it will give a, give you the download link. Now, if you copy the download link and access it, it will open. Again, this download link will be working only for a certain period of time based on what you choose. Okay, so this is the uh, the the controller that I have. Uh, basically, you need to install a couple of packages, um, and then once you're done with the packages, let's let's take a look at how the download works. So I have a method called uh, get blobs. Basically, the only requirement here is to pass the container name. Okay, the container name is uh, coming from the URL. I mean, from the endpoint itself. If they don't provide, this is the default one. They move protected. So what basically we do is we get the container name. Okay, we access the uh, the connection string of the Azure uh, account, the storage account, and the storage account uh, connection string is coming from if you go to the con the account and go under the access key under the security and networking you can see the connection string you can copy this connection string and this is the container okay so these are the containers these are the files now once you copy the connection string we have to put this here right so for now i'm going to configure it to the settings files which i'll show you shortly but that's how the connection string comes now it's very simple we take the cloud uh, the 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 client blob client provide the container name get the reference okay so once we have all these things we go to each files and generate the sas token in order to generate the sas token there's something called blob dot get shared access signature that's an inbuilt method all these are the inbuilt method we're going to use the dot net sdk to do so and in in this uh, shared access blob policy i'm just giving only the read permission and it should be valid only for one hour you have many other properties based on your need you can do it but once you do this it takes the connection string it goes and reads the container and all the blobs inside the container okay this is the container name and once it reads it it generates the sas token for each one of the file and we put that each one of the file inside a model called uh, the sas model it's a custom model which has a name and the download URL. okay so those two are filled up and then um, we finally return a complete string. See, this is the, the SAS that's generated. It has the key, it has the expiration time, like from what time to what time, and then that's it. So let's put a breakpoint at the end because it has three files. And this is what the model I was referring to. So it's a custom model. We have just the name and the download link. We are providing the file name as a name and then the download link as the complete URL along with the SAS token. Now we have three counts. All right, so let's take a look at this three counts. I'm gonna remove all the breakpoint and run it. All right, so we got this, right? So if you copy this and put it there, it will work very simple. 
So why do we do this, right? So if you have a protected website where you have to show these resources or some download links where it is accessible only for that particular user when they're logged in, that's when you generate these kind of SAS token. So when the user uh, requests for a download, it downloads only when, uh, you know, during the particular time, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes after that, the download should get expired, right? You might have seen a lot of emails coming up. Okay, this is valid for only, this token is valid for only five minutes, two minutes, whatsoever, right? So for a security reason, uh, this SaaS token is help, helping us to protect the resource. And I hope you enjoyed this video. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you like my video, don't forget to subscribe my channel, like it, share it, comment it, and never forget to click on the bell icon.